All right, my friend, thank you very, very much. So what is going on beneath the surface now in these hours before the first voters hit the polls? Uh, it's hard to tell uh, sometimes until after the fact. What we did learn back in 1980 was when a race that was considered very, very close, almost too close to call, even though Ronald Reagan had the edge, was virtually even between he and Jimmy Carter. We know what, of course, happened just a few days later. Uh, you could extend the same uh, to the 1994 midterm elections when Republicans were expected to do well but not take over the House well. Uh, let's go to economic advisor to one Ronald Reagan, Art Laffer, on what he looks for or what you're seeing right now. Art, what, what, what do you think? Well, I think you're right. I think the economy really does matter, ultimately. And I think people are going to be a little surprised with the election results. You take us back to Ronald Reagan, and it was great then. If you remember, uh, Jimmy Carter, I think, was leading like two weeks out. He was ahead in the polls. And then all of a sudden, we ended up with 51 percent. Jimmy Carter got only 42 percent. If you'll remember in that one, there was a spoiler, John Anderson, who got 7 percent in that race. And uh, then it was off to the races from then on. So I can't help but believe, Neil, that economics does play a major role. You look at Dave Brad, as you just had there, he's really a very good professional economist. I mean, as a politician, having those skills is quite, quite, quite impressive. You know, if you think about it, what all irony would there be there that he is uh, the, the, the guy who toppled Eric Canner is, in fact, toppled by an insurgent Democrat. And all I know. That. It's different, uh, though it might be. But it, what kind of things do you look for when some of the early results come in, Art, that, that could signify that maybe something is registering uh, and something is not? You know, what I really do is I look at you guys, uh, you and some of the other stations and what you guys, you have terrific analyzing equipment in the back, and you can tell very clearly and quickly whether things are going right or not. I just watch you, Neil, to be honest that's with you and see good, how you're That's looking. a very good rule Thank to live you. by. Uh, and you are so coming <laughs> back again. But let me, uh, let me ask you, when, when in 1994 was going on with, with Bill Clinton, of course, Republicans were expected to do well, with the health care debacle and its, it's, it's rocky launch, yeah. um, they weren't expected to do 52 seats, 53 seats well. well what they happened? What, what happened? That they, they signed the tax bill, the increase in the tax rates, and that was a killer. Every single incumbent Republican running for the Senate won. Every single Republican running for the House won. Every single Republican running for governorships won. It was the dumbest thing Bill Clinton ever did was that was the tax bill uh, that he put in there, that it was signed. It was it was it was the tie was broken between the Democrats and the Republicans 50-50. Al Gore broke the tie right. in the wrong direction, and they just got mauled because of economic. Economics. I think economics dominates this place. I know everyone else disagrees with me. They think it's boring. But I think in this election, you're going to see the economics there, too. I think the Republicans pick up two, maybe four seats in the Senate. Uh, I've been wrong a lot of times, Neil, so please, there's no gun money back guarantee. <laughs> but I still think there's a good shot. I think what you said about the House is, is it, it, there's a good shot the Republicans keep the House. Why would someone ever vote against their pocketbook or their kids' jobs or any of this? It makes no sense. Do you then find it surprising the president, it's not that he's ignoring the economy and the job numbers. He certainly mentions it enough, but he, he spends more time uh, you know, on these hot button issues like the caravan, what have you. And uh, it's even got to the point where Paul Ryan has urged him, you know, Mr. President, if you can in these last few days, keep pounding the job thing, keep pounding that, keep, keep, keep telling people if Democrats take charge, well, that's going to go away. And I don't know what the president's plans are in these final states. Uh, but what do you make of that message that the president is sitting on something that's his best story? Well, I think the real thing is the president speaks for so long at these rallies. I mean, there are an hour, an hour and a half, two hours long rallies, and it's hard to keep mentioning the same quarterly growth, the same jobs bill all the time. And so I think he winnows it down because he just needs some new material in there. Uh, <laughs> but he also said that, that economics is not as exciting as some of these other issues. You know, it may not be exciting, but it's something that people really use to vote. And they don't need to be told about their good jobs, their higher pay. They know. Look at the stock market. I mean, that's the biggest indicator to me of what's going to happen. And that decline in the stock market that occurred, you know, the, a, a little bit, a couple weeks ago, right. you know, now is reversing itself because I think people are much more excited about the election. The Obama stock market was terrible because everyone knew he was going to get elected. All the polls, everything, followed the inverse of what happened with the stock market because they were looking at what will be, not what has been. And when you look at these markets today, they make me more enthusiastic, more optimistic about tomorrow and the election results than less.
Well, I always defer to you on these money matters because you're oh, so no. smart. But I will say this. I think sometimes we overstate their importance of markets on the way up, helping a Canada or on the way down. Exactly. Um, but, but having said that, obviously you don't want it to crash. We learned from Herbert Hoover that's, no, no. that's not a good thing to happen under your watch. So let me but it's get the other you, way around. It's the other way around. No, no, no. The you're right. You're right. But let me then get pick, your sense the about um, what did you think of these surveys that show that a lot of the investment professionals, the brokers, the big money banks, et cetera, a disproportionate number of those guys and women, I should say, are giving to Democratic candidates, not Republicans. How's that for a thank you? Well, because they don't have the principles of governance that we do, and therefore you can buy favors from these people and you can't from Republicans in general. I mean, we're going to go but for the tax cuts. that's a weird thing. Them. I mean, that's a largely Republican crowd. I think they like money. And, the, and, yes. and whatever you think of the president, I mean, he's helped oh, yeah. them make a lot of money. And this is how yeah. they, they repay Yeah, but there's not a Republican out there that doesn't want a favor, unfortunately. There's not a Democrat, a Democrat out there that doesn't. Or a Democrat. Yeah, or a Democrat. Right. And so how do you get a special favor? You know, when you see the Goldman Sachs people hanging around with the president, it's not to explain to them what, you know, what poverty no, is like, right. Neil. It's to get a favor from them. It's to get a write-off from them, all this stuff. If you saw the types of pressures we faced in this tax bill of just getting this, that, and the other thing in there, oh, my God, they yeah. all want a little bit of favors, and Democrats are much more willing to do that stuff than Republicans. We shall see. All right, Art, thank you very, very much. Neil, it's great seeing you. Thanks for having me all on, right, and uh, I'll be watching you all day tomorrow. Excellent, excellent. Let's get this guy booked again, guys.